When the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock, and you hear your cuke and gobble of the struttin' turkey cock, and the clackin' of the guineas and the cluckin' of the hens, and the rooster's hallelujah as he tiptoes on the fence, oh, it's then's the times a feller is a-feelin' at his best, with the risin' sun to greet him from a night of peaceful rest, as he leaves the house bareheaded and goes out to feed the stock, when the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock. They's something kind of hearty-like about the atmosphere when the heat of summer's over and the coolin' fall is here. Of course we miss the flowers and the blossoms on the trees and the mumble of the hummin' birds and buzzin' of the bees. But the air's so appetizin' and the landscapes through the haze of a crisp and sunny mornin' of the early autumn days is a picture that no painter has the colorin' to mock when the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock. The husky, rusky, rustle of the tossels of the corn and the raspin of the tangled leaves as golden as the morn the stumble in the furries kind of lonesome like but still a preachin sermons to us of the barns they growed to fill the straw stack in the meadow and the reaper in the shed the hosses in their hay stalls the clover overhead oh it sets my heart a clickin like the tickin of a clock when the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock then your apples is all gathered, and the ones a feller keeps is poured around the cellar floor in red and yellow heaps. And your cider makin's over, and your women folks is through with their mince and apple butter, and their souse and sausage too. I don't know how to tell it, but if such a thing could be, as the angels want in boardin', and they'd call around on me, I'd want to accommodate them all, the whole endurin' flock, when the frost is on the pumpkin and the fodder's in the shock. <laughs> Sitting here thinking about the love that we both lead And the troubles we've been through But I know there's just one song within my heart And the melody is you I'm sitting here thinking about the life I'd like to lead And the things I'd like to do Still I know that when I get it figured out The melody is you Spent a long, long time Living all alone Then you came and you found me And made me your own And there have been others who have come and gone before With a love both strong and true But deep within my heart there lingers just one song And the melody is you There's no other who can captivate my heart. The melody is you. Thank you very much. One. Go ahead, call me Pandora. I never could leave well enough alone. I've an itchy streak a mile wide and a twitchy mind chomping to explore the sticky story that drips behind those sanded super's boards. It's a passed down story, one that's heavy and hard and sad, 
A story of nectar that's oozed out from a wind-turned box and gone bad, bad, bad. Two. See, Mama's daddy kept bees. It was the Great Depression then, not long before the war. Not long before he went plum crazy, as Mama's mama always claimed. Back when they sharecropped out in that cotton patch country, out in the sticks, out near the two-room schoolhouse where their shoeless children spelled and played. He might have been a good man, from what the kinfolks used to say. He tended to his hive, his passel of little daughters, his pregnant wife, his baby son, much as he'd always done, right up until the cataclysmic rupture, right up until out of the clear blue, he was gone. Winging off to sweeter pastures, off to a new queen if you catch my drift. Oft, off without a by your leave if you please, or a backwards guilty glance. Off to leave bees, wife, progeny, utterly unhusbanded, just left. Three. So pay no mind to the frantic scrabbling of my fingers taking hold. I'll soon fling this box's cover, hurl that rock, blow all lids. It's not the what or why I hunger to uncover. It's the anaphylactic how of what the did. <laughs> Thank you. Will I hear it when it's my time to go? My mother's voice when the street lights come on, calling me home. Will I hear it when it's my time to go? my mother's voice when the street lights come on calling me home thank you <laughs> beaverwood good friday a stump 18 inches wide at least gnawed off imagine the effort creatures pitching in from every side at the crest where the trunk finally ripped free, a tuft of wood twists and bristles like a spiky tail. The smooth grooves the incisors make amaze my fingertips. A song sparrow stutter leaps along its four-note springboard into staggered trill. From the farmhouse, the clear song of a cardinal. And overhead, a blue jay sails in with singular warning. A leaning arm's length from the rock where I sit, a fresh beaver cut in sapling, scatters shavings light and curly around the base. A chunk of feathered wood, precise in my hand, ridges like a pine cone or a grouse's fanned tail. I am not one for marking time these days, but this work could be only hours old. How long would I need to stay to see beaver teeth scraping gnawing a living. Today is the first day the sun has felt warm on my ungloved hands, my open neck, bare head bowed above the page. You could have been placid this morning, like yesterday, smooth, soft, with tiny frills gathered as the wind whispered across your great expanse. You could have slept in, muffled snores erupting from the north, or conjectured the next solution to global warming, or just bathed as you stirred cyanobacterial algae into intricate patterns of paisley swirls, arced stripes. 
but the sun peeks from behind moist clouds, wisps of lather, tongue of hot pink, on a day that has not yet decided what to do with itself. Egged by wind, you roar your steady roar. Throw yourself and throw again. Let spring forth a force worthy of the heat to come, something I can fight against with all my might, stroke after stroke, wash over me, wave, wave. I don't know if this is gonna come off as I expected. That's a strange line to start a show. But that's what the speaker is saying as he holds some kind of device in his hand, personal device. I assume it has his latest work. But beyond that, I have no idea what to expect. As the output from this performer spans forms and genres, poetry, narrative, stories, insane rants, musical accompaniment. But I don't expect this. As he touches something on the device, everything starts to change. I feel torrents of possibilities, amorphous, yet brimming with some intrinsic significance. I see plumes of images, or suggestions of images, coming from some place in an undefined time and undefined place, and I feel myself transported to that undefined place and time. I try to grab some explanation as to what is happening, but it's like trying to catch a ball by mental telepathy. I give up. I surrender to the moment and feel that the speaker and I are fusing. I become displaced in time. I am the speaker preparing for this show, looking at a blank piece of paper from which words start to emerge like trespassers from the other side of appearances. And the words start telling me that it's a sea that we're rising while shaping edges in the enveloping ethers by clinging to a syllabic scaffold that we're trying to reach a handhold to rise above the horizon of this endless ocean. For we have seen the sun rise and the sun set over the sea that has given us our lives with such varied intention. It's a tree that's rising through a dense foliage that's filtering the rays of sun raining down on this profusion of thought forms that are gathering the netherworld potential into a place to stand. These words are giving me a directive, a direction in life, a pass through the fog of uncertainty. Take that stand. Feel the immense power of the trunk as it rises through the dense foliage for eons with the sole intention of spreading its leaves to receive the sun. I need no explanations. I've lost all my expectation. Thank you for taking this journey with me. the new snow. Ca 
carols on loudspeakers mock Christmas Eve. He holds closed his collar, his hands up his sleeve. Visions of big tippers dancing his mind. He holds out his shoebox, ten cents a shine. Ten blocks to Main Street in the New England cold. Two hours, no takers, damn the snow. The neighborhood's quiet, but Main Street's alive. Crowded with shoppers, 1955. The minister's scrapbook brings tears to his eyes. The newspaper clipping. Picture inside of the shine boy on the corner with tears streaming down, and the caption read, "The loneliest boy in the town." Nothing so tender as the love of a mother. It's sure and steady like hourglass sand. Nothing slows time like the grip. No hunger and nothing stops time like the back of her hand. The shine boy sits down at the edge of the curbstone, his feet in the gutter, his head in his hands. The cameraman calls out, and gets his attention, and in a flash. Forgotten scrapbook, pictures don't lie. Confirming the moment you rather deny of the shine boy as he stops in the church to get out of the cold. A vision comforted his soul. Nothing so tender as the love of a father. It's sure and steady as hourglass sand. Fatherless boy, husbandless mother, poet, painter, savior of man. Snow flows in circles, revealing the wind. Christmas lights glow in the halo. Once again, I've let myself be packaged up in pieces, mailed in all directions, and then scattered to the wind. Times like these, I feel the pull of wilderness and water. Far from all the pretense, far from all the games I've tried to win. Come, let's row the wooden boat to Fair Island. Find the hidden cottage made of stone. Sit beside the fire in the evening. A little life there on our own. You know I'm already there in my mind. You have also felt the press of blinking lights and numbers. Everyone demanding something you don't have to give. Won't you come away with me? We'll breathe in deep together. Loosen up our shoulders. Dream about the life we're meant to live. Come, let's row the wooden boat to Fair Island. Find the hidden cottage made of stone. Sit beside the fire in the evening. A little life there on our own. You know I'm already there. You know I'm already there. You know I'm already there in my mind. 
On Preston Beach, where I walked its length from end to end, my mind was busy with many things. And though I tried to listen to the sea, to the crush of sand beneath my boots, and to the song of the seabirds, many thoughts intruded upon that quiet place. But the air was cold and crisp, and I was glad to be there. Then, as I came to the rocks on the far end, <coughs> I stopped and turned to begin making my way back the way that I had come. I had not been aware of the wind that had been at my back on the way down. Now that same wind that had gone unnoticed was whipping into my eyes, making them water and sting with cold, clean, fresh air. I stuck, to the close, I stuck closer to the water's edge on my return. And once or twice <coughs> when I was not paying attention, my boots got wet right up through the toes. I stepped on rocks covered with green, goldeny seaweed plants. And more than once I slipped, almost falling face first onto the wet sand. The tide was ebbing. The beach was wide and vast. And where the sand was flat between the rocky places, I could see at that acute angle the soft glistening of water glass on its surface. The purple sky, wide and high, was reflected on the surface of the sand. Sky above, sky below. I walked with care, afraid its delicate surface would crack beneath my boots. Thank you. I have drunk alabaster sitting beside the wormhole ancient stone and water fallen over rocks cascading in a timeless folded stream beside the water's swirl. This giant layered rock in split and seamed, creased, cracked, and pocked, water eaten till a city's endless towered steps of human structuring grow small and dwindle by its side. These sea stone cities are more strong, more rich, as veined and numinous as dead wood under weather or pulsing human flesh. These too shall pass, yet in the passing be transmuted, mute as stone, into some other vein of silent speaking life. For life goes on, no matter what the loss. The past is present, and the future comes to be as silently as stone <coughs> grown out of fire or the ocean's moonstone depth. I'm a little bit country and some rock and roll a whole lot of rhythm in my soul but if you don't love me, really don't love me, I've been thinking. I like a grand piano and a smooth whiskey. Kids on the porch in their rocking chair, watching the sun setting over the bay. But if you don't love me, when did you ever love me? I like a bonfire down by the shore. Great food and wine and funny things to smoke and late night conversation with the best of friends. But if you don't love me, really don't love me. I like wailing the blues on a Saturday night and even like a celebration when the time is right. A little do -si d and do -si do a bow and a curtsy when the music slows 
I'm that type of guy. But if you don't love me, when did you ever love me? Patty cake, patty cake. Yes, your grandmother and I were together 40 years. Yes, it's a long time. Yes, we like to slow dance in the sand dunes. Yes, close. Yes, maybe we should just make cookies this time. Because if you don't really love me, how did you ever love me? I've been thinking. I like a grand piano and a smooth whiskey. Kids on the porch in their rocking chair. A bonfire down by the shore and late night conversation with the best of friends. Wailing the blues on a Saturday night and celebrating everything that's right. But if you don't love me, really don't love me, I've been thinking what to tell the children why grandma doesn't sleep here anymore. Thank you.